Hello, peeps. Dr. E here. Peace and shalom to you. Salam Aleichem, if you are a Muslim. Shalom, if you're Jewish. Peace, if you're just a regular American Gentile. There you go. Chapter 7, Manfin. Chapter 7, Homework Cinco. Numero Cinco. Uh, FTEY, Fully Taxable Equivalent Yield, Seniority and Covenants. Let us begin. Number one, the bond market is larger than the stock market because there are four large categories of bond issuers. Name them, the, the issuers, the big categories of bond issuers. First, the Federal Treasury. Yes, we, the, Trump just announced a $2 trillion uh, stimulus package. How are we going to pay for that? How are we going to pay for that? Well, we're going to issue Federal Treasury bonds to pay for it. Uh, then federal agencies, these are primarily, these are organizations that are overseen by the federal government and are primarily involved in buying mortgages and they issue bonds. Then we have state governments, county governments, and city governments that issue bonds. And then finally we have uh, corporations that issue bonds. In the stock market, only one of these groups issues stock and that would be the corporations. All right, an investor in the 35% marginal tax bracket is in the 35% marginal tax bracket. A municipal bond has a 6% coupon rate. What is the FTEY, the fully taxable equivalent yield, for this bond? And the answer is the FTEY is equal to the coupon rate divided by 1 minus the tax rate. And so the coupon rate is 6% and the tax rate is, we said, 35%. And so we get an answer of 9.23%. Okay, what does this mean? This means that a corporation that issues a bond that pays interest of 9.23% after taxes is the same as a state, county, or city uh, government that issues a bond and uh, that has a 6% interest on it. Because you have to pay taxes on this, but you do not pay taxes in most cases on this, income taxes on this. All right, a corporate bond has an 8% coupon rate. For the investor above, what is the after-tax yield of this bond? The after-tax yield equals the pre-tax yield times one minus the tax rate. So this would be 0.08 times 1 minus 0.35, which is 0.65. Pay 35% in taxes, keep 65% for yourself, and you get 5.2%. Now you could compare the after-tax rate on a corporate bond with the before-tax rate on a municipal bond. Um, that is a fair comparison. After-tax, taxable bond, pre-tax municipal bond because there is no tax, okay? So what would be the after-tax yield on this? It would be 9.23% times 1 minus 0.35, and guess what? That would be 6%, okay? So don't look at the, the taxable bond and say, oh, 9.23%. That is much higher than the 6% municipal bond, not for a person in the 35% tax bracket. And guess what? The higher this bracket goes, this, this marginal rate goes, the more this 6% is worth. Let's say your marginal rate is 40%. You divide 
by 0 0.06 by 0.6, and I think it's 10%. Yeah, 10%. Your tax rate goes up, the, the pre-tax yield is worth more. So the higher the tax rate is for the investor, the more the tax-free yield is worth. All right, what concept determines which bondholder gets paid first in the event the issuer goes bankrupt? And the concept is called seniority seniority and we go over that in the uh, lecture videos what are the similarities and differences between a sinking fund and a call feature excuse me so similarities the similarity is that with a sinking fund and with a call feature bonds are repurchased prior to when they mature and remember maturity uh, is when the, the principals paid back the differences well a call is voluntary. The company has the right, but not the obligation, to buy the bond. A sinking fund is an obligation. The company is obligated to buy a certain number of bonds back over a period of time. A call has a specified purchase price on it. Okay? A sinking fund will simply pay the market price to buy the number of bonds back that they're supposed to buy back. Okay. Number six, what do you call a bond that has a coupon rate that may change over time? What limits are placed on those changes? It is called a floating rate or an adjustable rate bond. The percentage changes are limited each year and are limited over the life of the loan or the life of the bond. So, the, the, the rate, the interest rate paid on an adjustable rate or floating rate uh, bond is tied to some other index like the 10-year treasury, okay? So, it might be your bond pays 4% plus 2%, um, um, well, not, I'm sorry. Your bond mate will pay two, the treasury rate plus 2%. So if the treasury rate is 4%, then your interest payment will be 6%. Okay? And there's a limit to how much that can change in a year. If it's 4%, if it was 4% last year, and there's a limit of 1% each year, but the 10-year the goes up to... 4% and now you should be paying 6% because there's a 1% limit the most you can pay that year is 5% 4% plus 1 okay there's also a limit over the life of the bond what if interest rates continue to tick up and it may say it can't change more than 4 percentage points over the life of the bond and when the bond is issued the treasury rate is 3% the 10 year treasury well let's say it goes to um, let's say it goes to uh, 6% and there's a 3% lifetime limit. Well, 6% plus 2% is 8% and it was uh, at 3% plus 2%, 5% with a 3% limit. You've reached the limit. 8% is the limit. All right. So there's an annual limit and a lifetime limit. What do you call legal language that protects bondholders from acts of the bond issuer that might be reckless or damaging. What two types of these are there? And th these are called, these, these provisions in the indenture are called protective covenants. Promises that the issuer makes. Two types, positive covenants. These are things that, that the issuer must do and negative covenants. Covenants, these are things that the issuer cannot do. Okay, that is homework five. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back for number six. Peace out, shalom. That was quick. <laughs>